Hey folks, today we're talking about a question that I think has one of the most widely variable answers I've seen in all of endurance sports. How much protein should I eat as an endurance athlete? I think there's a huge variability in the answer to how much carbohydrate you should eat, but it seems to be like one of three camps. You're either in the keto camp, no carbohydrate. You're in the modest approach with your carbohydrate fueling because sugar is kind of bad. Eat uh, lots of whole foods. Or you're in the super high carb fueling all the time, 100 grams of carbs per hour, every ride, all the time. In the protein for endurance athletes discussion, I see recommendations for 0.5 grams per pound all the way up to 1.5 grams per pound, which for me would be 300 and, well, 315. I do my math right, 315 grams of protein per day. That's a lot. And then like the 0.5 gram per pound, that's like 100 grams of protein for me, which I'm 210 pounds, that's not very much protein. And for like somebody who's like my wife, that's like 70 grams of protein. That's that's really not very much. Well, I'm getting into all the details, but if you care about your body composition, 0.5 grams per pound of body weight, not a good idea. But 1.5 is pretty excessive and I've seen answers literally everywhere in between. Today, we're gonna talk about how much protein you should have daily. Based Based on your goals, your body type, how your body weight factors in, how your body composition factors in to how much protein you should eat, your goals for muscularity or body composition change and how that should affect your daily protein consumption amount, and your endurance performance goals and how that should affect your daily protein consumption. Number one, body weight. Body weight is easily the biggest determining factor. 250 pound, well-muscled person, especially if they wanna keep their muscle, is gonna to need to consume a lot of protein compared to a 90 pound, 18 year old female who's like star cross country runner, probably doesn't need 250 grams of protein per day. So minimum protein consumption should roughly be 0.5 grams per pound of body weight. And that is the bare minimum. That's also the RDA. It's pretty laughable because for most people, much more protein than that is recommended because it's better for body composition and the better your body composition is the longer you live uh, and the healthier you are during the years of your life. Only reason I move the minimum down for endurance athletes is because carbohydrates are so important during high volume training that you kind of have to make room in the overall kilocalorie picture for sufficient carbohydrates to fuel the training and sometimes protein has to be reduced to do that. Maximum that I would ever recommend for an endurance athlete is one gram per pound of body weight. Okay, I have an exception. Men over 50, fine, increase to like 1.2 or if you're like really, really obsessed with your body composition and want to absolutely maximize your muscularity, bordering on not being an endurance athlete, maybe 1.5 grams per pound, but that's like really, really up there and only for older men. Probably most people who are watching this video, one gram per pound of body weight is uh, on the very high end for an endurance athlete because you have to meet your carbohydrate needs if you want your endurance performance to be good and that's a big chunk of your daily kilocalories that have to come from carbs and if you consume one gram per pound of body weight in protein additionally to that, that's gonna leave very little wiggle room for anything else. Interestingly, if you'd like to become pre-diabetic as a super lean, high performance endurance athlete, you can cut your protein below a half a gram per pound of body weight per day and, and you'll become pre-diabetic because your diet will consist of a very high proportion of carbohydrates. And uh, yeah, when your protein consumption is that low, you can start to develop insulin resistance even as an endurance athlete. Athlete. And how do I know that? Uh, my wife and I have done some experimentation. Uh, we're fine. Body composition is the second factor that should determine your protein intakes. Lean mass is a better determining factor for protein intake needs because if you are 200 pounds and 40% fat, you may actually need less protein than somebody who's 200 pounds and 10% body fat because simply maintaining muscular architecture that you have uh, requires more daily protein intake. The leaner you are, the more you might want to bump up towards that one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. So there's this dichotomy of being lean but also being a high performance endurance athlete. You have to balance the two. Uh, the leaner you are for your body weight, closer to one gram per pound, the more you want performance, closer to 0.5 grams per pound. So a better minimum than 0.5 grams per pound of body weight might be 0.6 grams per pound of lean mass. That's probably a, a more accurate and safe minimum. In general, if you're exceeding that one gram uh, or maybe 1.1 grams of protein per pound of lean mass every day, you're probably experiencing trade-offs in terms of performance. Uh, you might be optimizing your body composition, uh, but you're essentially having wasted calories by consuming that much protein. But the biggest reason for uh, an elevated protein consumption, if you care about your muscularity, you want more muscle, you 
you want to keep the large amount of muscle that you have, you might need more protein. You might also benefit from higher protein intakes, like toward, up towards the one gram per pound of body weight. If you're seeking fat loss, using a hypocaloric diet, which is the only way that you're going to get uh, any weight loss to happen. And if you're hoping for body composition change, higher protein, probably a good idea. And I'm not talking about higher protein for like a week to see if you can get your body composition to change. I'm talking about target one gram per pound of body weight for like a year and see if your body composition changes and you might be pleasantly surprised. So on to performance goals. How do endurance performance goals factor into the protein amounts that you should consume? You should have lower protein targets daily if you care first and foremost about your endurance performance. If you have excess muscle and you're like, yeah, I don't really care if I lose some. If you like to lift like two or three days a week, you're providing a pretty steady stimulus to your muscles to grow. If you're like, well, I don't really want muscle growth. I just want to be strong. You don't need that much protein because the stimulus that you're providing with your lifting training will be sufficient to maintain all of your muscle mass. And you can actually make room in your diet by lowering your protein and allotting the rest of those calories towards carbohydrate or healthy fats. So if you're an endurance athlete, maybe lift once or twice a week, you really care about your endurance performance and you're not really seeking body composition change, you might wanna target like 0.6 grams of protein per pound of lean mass per day. And that will guarantee that you have enough room in your diet overall to fit sufficient carbohydrates to fuel your training and sufficient healthy fats to have healthy organ function and healthy hormonal environment. There's this huge myth that like the more endurance training you do, the more protein you should eat because you need the protein to recover your muscles and damage and all that. That's not really super true. You probably need to actually increase your carbohydrate intake the more training you do substantially. And if you're in one of those high volume phases, most likely as you increase your carbohydrate intake, carb sources like even oatmeal and potatoes have a little bit of protein in them and you're gonna be eating so much of them to fuel your training, your protein intake is gonna drift upwards anyway and so you don't need to target increased protein just because you have increased training. That's just a good way to make sure that your training is under fueled because if you're increasing your protein intake, you are necessarily decreasing the amount of room in your diet you have for carbohydrates without gaining weight and so you ramp up your volume super high and all of a sudden your protein elevates and your carbs don't have much room to go up, you're gonna feel bad and that's when people start to binge eat after their super long training sessions. They're like, oh, I gotta get more protein. It's like, well, you're having a super fatty meal and then you're diving headlong into the ice cream. That's probably not the best approach. Just eat more carbs, replenish the glycogen that you lost and your protein requirements will be met. So if you have a friend that always says, oh, I gotta get more protein, I'm in a high volume training block, send them this video. Tell them to go watch our carbohydrate fueling video too because chances are they're underdosing their carbohydrates both during training and after training. And if you found this video helpful, like it, subscribe, do all the things. Thank you. Until next time.